So it's been a generation since the end of the Cold War. The Berlin Wall fell 20 years ago. It was the last classic standoff between East and West, communism against democracy, and Berlin played an important part in that conflict. Remnants of the Cold War still remain in Berlin all around us, but people aren't necessarily aware of their importance or significance, despite walking past them and seeing them every day. So today I'm at Teufelsberg, one such place. So many people think Teufelsberg is just a hill outside Berlin, a cool hangout spot with a great view over the city, but it's way more significant than that. There's a listening station posted here, recording everything that was going on in East Germany, and it was really on the front lines of the conflict between East and West. Teufelsberg is actually an artificial hill on the outer edge of Berlin, and its name translates in German to Devil's Mountain. It was built out of the rubble of the city after World War II and covers a military college once run by the Third Reich. In 1957, America's National Security Agency built this strange-looking compound as a listening station during the Cold War. So you can tell people come here, the place is covered in graffiti. But I can't imagine anyone hanging out here now in the middle of the winter. It's f***ing cold. Teufelsberg has been abandoned since the early 1990s, and as I walked around the concrete, metal, and glass skeleton of this one-time listening station, I knew the story of this place would be best told by someone who actually worked here. So I met with Harry Pollable, a former American Army intercept commander who was stationed at Teufelsberg at the height of the Cold War, from 1976 to 1980. When the Second World War ended, the, um, the Americans put up a, a mobile communications intercept point up here. And they realized the higher they got, the better the interception. We had at the top of this tower a 40-foot parable um, antenna, 40-foot mm -hmm. diameter, that's a big thing. We could pick up almost any signal transmitted off from Russia into the MOD in Berlin. You know, if you look at it, it looks like, you know, like, yeah. a, like a, that's how it looks. And that's, I believe, intentional. Were there any particular precautions that had to be taken? <laughs> no talking. Yeah. The only time we can talk about the mission here was in the building, when we were in the building, when we were on duty. Off duty, outside, in the city, not a single word. So it was almost like leading a double life in a way. Oh yeah, sure. I worked right there on the third floor on this end. To see it now is kind of, kind of depressing. It was a strategic location for the Americans and the British. Because West Berlin was embedded within East Germany, setting up here this high above the rest of the city allowed the West to intercept communications coming from East Berlin, East Germany, parts of Russia and Poland. This was the intercept floor. When I first got here, my working area is right back here in the corner. This here was the operations room. This was a um, Morris intercept. So this is one of those. These were these domes are designed to protect the parabolic antennas. So that um, first of all, no one from outside could see what was in here. And secondly, if you look at the form, each one of these triangles has a different dimension. There are no two triangles with the same dimension. That makes these these are metal frames, and if they were all the same form and same length they would have a, a frequency problem. Did you feel like you were making a difference here? Yes, definitely. Despite being abandoned, Teufelsberg has managed to capture the imagination of many from around Berlin, and really from around the world. Julius von Bismarck is a visual artist who lives in Berlin and he's in the middle of building a contraption that was directly inspired by Teufelsberg's golf wall-like domes. That's an apparatus that I am um, building since one year. I had the idea for building this apparatus up there in the dome. In, in, in summer this place is totally different. It's really romantic because you have the view over the whole forest and the city. And uh, at sunset it's really a romantic place where people go to, to uh, kiss their girls the first time. The apparatus is projecting the film, but it's moving, so it's able to pan around like robotic. And it's, um, 
it's moving exactly like the camera moved that shots the film that is projected. So it can move 360 degrees and up and down, it can zoom in and out. Yeah, I will put an old movie um, in this apparatus. Yeah, and, the, and it's projecting it on a, onto a dome that is around you. And the dome is painted with glow-in-the-dark paint, so the images remain, they don't go away. So if it's panning away, the image they stay on the wall. So in the end, he's, you're standing in the middle of a movie. This apparatus is based on ideas that I had upstairs in the dome. I um, often go there because it's so inspiring. The shape of the building is already a really inspiring place. And also the view and all the history. And you are kind of flying above Berlin. Every surface around you is in 90 degrees to you. So every radiation gets reflected directly back to you. But if you we are a bit out of, out of the middle, so most of the vices are coming from above, so you, your voice sounds like your God speaking to you. These walls are for me a symbol of your own brain. Harry told us that Teufelsberg was only an intercept station during the Cold War, and that transmissions there, phone calls, radio broadcasts, and other encrypted government communications, were actually processed elsewhere, in secret bunkers below what was once Berlin's main airport, Tempelhof. The next morning, I invited my friend Eva to come visit Tempelhof with me. Eva has lived in Berlin for four years and was interested in seeing these bunkers. She was born after the fall of the Berlin Wall and like many young Berliners was curious about these relics of the Cold War that existed unnoticed or hidden in her everyday landscape. Tempelhof was built in 1923 and had survived World War II and the Cold War before being decommissioned in 2008. What made this abandoned airport particularly intriguing was that during the Cold War, many people suspected the bunkers were more than just a data processing center, that it too was a central hub of espionage activities during the Cold War. We met with Henry Bieder, who was a former property manager at the airport and had worked here for 40 years. Um, also, wo befinden wir jetzt, jetzt gerade? Wir sind in der Haupthalle. Das ist die Haupthalle vom Flughafen Tempelhof. Die um, als der Kalte Krieg losging, um, was, hatte, was hatte der Flughafen für eine Funktion? Naja, der Kalte Krieg, da meinen Sie ja die Besatzerzeit, nicht? wo also die Amerikaner, Russen und Franzosen, ja. Engländer in Deutschland waren. Da zu dieser Zeit hat dieser Flughafen war der, der, der Tor zur weiten Welt, also der, zur freien Welt vor allen Dingen. Das war eben der einzige Weg nach draußen. Ja. Es bestand zu der Zeit eine Verbindung zwischen Teufelsberg und Flughafen Tempelhof. Sicherlich, ja. Da war die Abhöranlage und hier oben war die Auswertungsräumlichkeit. Können wir vielleicht diesen Bunker sehen? Den Bunker können Sie sehen, ja. Der, der ist da. <lacht> He told us that the bunkers were built by the Nazis during World War II, but went undiscovered until shortly after the end of the war. The Russians learned that the bunkers were actually used as an underground storage facility when they accidentally set it on fire. There were things that were eingelagert, die eben den Russen nicht in die Finger fallen sollten. It waren von allen Fronten die Filme, die was da sich abgespielt hat. Also Kriegsfilme aus dem Zweiten Weltkrieg. Kriegsfilme. So, und dann hat der Russe natürlich das gesehen, dass hier irgendwas kaschiert werden sollte und hat den Bunker aufgesprengt. Die sind aus der Zeit von 1940, 41, 42, 43, also während des Krieges gebaut. Dazu gehört der auch. Der war aber jetzt nicht dazu da, Menschen zu schützen, sondern der war dazu da, Material sicher einzulagen, dass es nicht explodiert. Und wenn es explodiert, dass niemand Schaden nimmt. Also alle Filme sind auch zerstört. Fabrik, weit, weit weg. Alles, es ist, ich habe keinen gesprochen, der noch eine Büchse gefunden hat. Es war also so, dass der, die, die, die Hitze ist so groß gewesen, dass die Betondecken praktisch zerschmolzen sind. So dark down here, the lights. Mm -hmm. 
know, it gives us sort of weird eerie effects and shadows everywhere. It's kind of strange. It's really weird kind of smell around here. It's only really dusty. During the Cold War era, the Americans controlled the bunker, but our guide told us that it wasn't ever used for secret spying activities. The myth was much more intriguing than the truth. Ja, na wie das so ist, wenn irgendwo geheimnisvoll, die finden irgendwo ein Erdloch und dann ist da sonst wer drin gewesen, irgendein Geist oder so. Despite not discovering any real clandestine espionage at Tempelhof, our exploration still gave us some insight into Berlin's own identity, 20 years after the fall of the wall. The city houses a constellation of Cold War relics. Most of them, like Tempelhof and Teufelsberg, remain abandoned, unsure of their future use. Perhaps because Berlin itself is unsure of how to treat its own history as an epicenter of the Cold War. Is it something to be treasured or something to be forgotten? Only time will tell. <laughs>